Okay, before you comment, really, Mark? Another Fairly Odd Parents video? Didn't you just make one like two weeks ago? I understand, I genuinely had no intentions of doing this, but around a day or two after releasing that video, we received the excellent news that the Fairly Odd Parents would be getting a reboot. And not only just a reboot, a live action retelling. I mean, come on, how could I not talk about that? But I don't just want to sit here for five minutes, say it's dumb and won't work, and then move on with my day. Because I think this is actually the most perfect excuse to talk about a topic I've wanted to discuss for a long time. And it's why I think the Fairly Odd Parents is as good as it is. Which therefore leads into how I believe it is impossible to replicate that in live action. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Hey, uh, what up, Mark? Uh, it's me, Simply Dead, and I, uh... I'm your, I'm, I'm your fairy godparent. Oh my god, internet personality Simply Dad is my fairy godparent? Yeah, that's, that's right. So, uh, what's your first wish gonna be, buddy? Hmm, I got it. I wish I were able to save money when buying things on the internet. You see, these days most shopping is done online. Hey, I gotta get those Sonic figures somehow. And that's where Honey comes in. Honey is a free browser extension that scars the internet for promo codes and applies them at checkout. Here's what you do, it's just two easy clicks. When checking out on one of the 30,000 supported sites, you'll be asked by Honey to apply the coupons, and now all you gotta do is sit back and watch the savings roll in. Like look at this, I just used Honey to save money in this radical Sonic the Hedgehog set, and you can too by joining Honey for free with joinhoney.com slash lsmark. Thanks Honey for sponsoring this video. Wow, you uh, you really wasted your first wish on an ad read, huh? Yeah, I'm I'm out of here. I don't really get paid enough to do any of this nonsense. The Fairly Odd Parents was a Nickelodeon animated series created by the man, the myth, the legend Butch Hartman, as part of Nick's Oh Yeah cartoon segment, with it eventually being turned into a full series in 2001. It was an idea quite literally made up on the spot, Butch says, which I think he intends to sound more impressive than it actually is. It stars Timmy Turner, just an average kid who no one understands. He's frequently neglected by his parents and is taken care of by his mean babysitter called Vicky. And because of that he is given furry godparents to grant his every wish, Cosmo and Wanda. It's quite the basic and not very original setup, again, came up with on the spot, but when you think about it, this is like the most perfect idea for a kid's cartoon ever. It opens up the endless possibilities of a child's imagination, where they can have episodes as mundane as Timmy wanting to be good at skateboarding, all the way to going back in time and stopping his parents from ever meeting, that they really could do whatever they wanted and tackle any genre, sci-fi concept, and media such as books and the internet. Y you get what I mean, what I'm getting at here is that the possibilities are never ending. Stuff like that really intrigues a kid, it opens up their mind to this stuff. When I was young I loved episodes like the one where Timmy goes inside the internet or in his TV, because it just evoked this sense of wonder like anything could happen despite the really dated television budget CGI. But no matter what crazy concept, no matter what potential plot they could cover, at the end of the day that wasn't what the series was about. The show was about an average kid being given a pair of guardians, who truly care about him and want to watch him grow into a better person. Without the balance between the three of them, Timmy, Cosmo and Wanda, then I really don't think the show would have been anywhere near as popular as it ended up being. In the first couple seasons you really get a feel for them, and that no matter how much they bicker and make fun of each other, they really do love one another. I would say I was sorry, and I would say I'm proud to be your wife, Wanda, who is your wife. You know, it's like as a kid you come for the concept, you come for a kid making dumb extreme wishes and having to face the consequences of his actions. But oh no, what's that? Now you started to care about this little trio and want to make sure they stick together. I've been re-watching a lot of early Farley Odd Parents over the past few months, and it led me to a conclusion I wasn't expecting to ever say, but... This show is really unfunny. That's not to say I can never have comedic moments that make me laugh. I'm not even going to attempt to say that because it's just not true. Well, forget the mushy stuff. Try a threat. What? Watch. Dear Trixie, we have your parents. If you ever want to see them again. Kelly. But much like most of Butch Hartman's cartoons, Fairly Odd Parents really loves the running gag. Or on the start of the episode, a character will make a quick joke and they will run it into the ground for the next 11 minutes. I challenge you to a skateboarding contest tomorrow. And whoever wins gets to be the new queen. King. Good catch. Just do the Timmy Tuck and you'll be the new queen. King. Whatever. I won. I'm the queen now. King. Right. Most of the comedy I enjoy from this show comes from random one-liners or minor character interactions. Nothing all that laugh out loud about it. You know, it's weird because I remember laughing at this show a ton as a kid and thinking it was hilarious. But when thinking back to my favorite episodes, none of them were because I thought they were all that funny, but instead because I liked a character moment or thought the concept was neat. Stuff like Timmy becoming a girl for the day or finally getting to see what was inside Cosmo and Wanda's fish castle. Think back to your favorite episode of a show like Spongebob. 
fan geeks, chocolate with nuts, wet painters, whatever episode, what is it you like about it? I think 9 out of 10 people will tell you it's the comedy, it's that the show is just simply really, really funny. But to me, I don't enjoy Fairly Odd Parents for that same reason. The show manages to pull off something that might be even harder than being funny, and that's charm. This show is really charming. I like seeing these characters sit and make small talk together. But because of that, you also don't mind that there isn't always such a massive focus on comedy. They can have episodes that are more action-heavy or more about the character dynamics. You simply like seeing these characters in any setting. Originally, Fairly Odd Parents had a lot of heart. They did a really good job at elevating certain scenes to make them really touching. And I'm not even talking about in the big specials like Abra Catastrophe or Channel Chasers. Even in the smaller episodes like something as minor as this. Yeah! Any dad can go out and buy a bike. You love me enough to make one yourself. That's what makes it cool. But that's the operative word there, originally. Because if they really plan on rebooting the Fairly Odd Parents, then I think it's wise to take a look at how poorly this can go because this show was run into the ground harder than any other. There were many points when the Fairly Odd Parents was going to get cancelled, as Butch Hartman says. But there's one moment everyone can point to as the definite moment the series started going downhill. And that was with the season 6 premiere Fairly Odd Baby, which introduced Poof. Cosmo and Wanda's Child. This is the most viewed episode in the show's history to my knowledge, and while the premiere itself was decent, it set an awful precedent for what the writers of the show should do whenever they feel creatively bankrupt. Eh, just chuck in another character, who cares, the people will want to watch. As we all know, they went seriously overboard with this. It started with Poof, then we got Foop. Season 9 had Sparky the dog, who was literally just putschy but without any hint of irony. He got anti-Sparky, and of course everyone knows about their last ditch effort with Chloe, the new girl who was introduced to share Timmy's fairies and to be a general foil for him. It didn't work out too well that time to say the least, and with the failure of Butch's most recent cartoon Bunsen as a beast, it was clear Nick just kinda wanted rid of him, and sent Fairly Odd Parents off to die on the less popular Nicktoons network, despite it still getting some pretty good ratings, where it died a slow, painful death. Going out not in a bang, but on a whimper. It didn't even get a proper finale. But I guess the people behind it assumed they had been revived so many times that there was no real way to definitely know if they were actually done at that point. So what's the point in making a proper finale? You're just gonna have another channel chaser situation. But all this is because the Fairly Odd Parents just wasn't the kind of show that could have lasted as long as it did. 16 years. The wishing well had to dry up eventually. So they just ended up repeating concepts they'd already done before. I mean, look. The first episode of The Fairly Odd Parents features Timmy wishing to be older and realizing he likes being a kid better. Then there was an episode later on about Timmy going to an amusement park and wishing he was older, dealing with the consequences of that. Then in season 10, there was an episode about them going to an I mean, amusement park where Chloe wishes she was older with a ton of creepy fan art to boot, oh boy. You could just tell they were grasping at straws, which is a shame because you can really tell in season 10 how completely different both shows were. After this video, go watch an episode from Season 1, then go and check out Season 10, it's, it's night and day. Not even the cast felt the same. Remember all the memorable second characters from the show? Trixie? Gone. Mark Chang? Tootie? Also gone. Francis? They forgot about him all the way back in Season 7. Chester? Edge? <laughs> they didn't even bring in their voice actors for their last appearance, probably just threw in some intern into the recording booth. I'm not exaggerating when I say it feels like a completely different show. All they seem to share really are Timmy, Cosmo, Wanda, Mom and Dad and Vicky always giving him commands. That's what intrigues me about the reboot announcement. It's not really referred to as a reboot, they're calling it a retelling. Does that mean they're just gonna go through episodes they've already done before just in live action? Hey, don't ask me, I don't know. Yeah, it was rhetorical. Well anyways, because if that's the case, then that is very worrying. If you don't understand why this is, let's go through a list of reasons about why you should be worried about this upcoming retelling, slash why the Fairly Odd Parents will not and has not worked in live action. <laughs> So leaving Nick in 2018 as he felt his time there was up, which is basically code word for, they did not want to pick up any more of my shows and let me go. Pretty epic. Butch Hartman went on to many new endeavors, such as teaming up with an awful YouTube family channel to make cartoons for them, making some dumb expensive Christian cartoon, and of course his biggest blunder, trying to set up a Christian streaming service in which he received $270,000 from his loyal fans to do so. Even though it's been around 2 or 3 years at this point, there has been no updates on Oaxis, and with him crawling back to Nick, it's safe to say the project is dead in the water, and he has no intentions of giving people their money back. But my point here isn't to say, Butch Hartman's bad, he shouldn't be allowed to work on it, despite how true that may be. But Butch Hartman had 16 years to work on this show, and his abilities only seem to degrade over time. So why should he be trusted in bringing the series to live action? I've recently seen some people trying to claim that Butch had barely any involvement in the series being good and trying to invalidate all he did. 
And while that may be the case for Danny Phantom, and I'm always down to clown on Butch, but I just can't agree with that. He directed and storyboarded many great episodes from the show's early years. It's clear the guy had some talent, but his ego has since clouded that and now all we're left with is this. Why not bring in someone new? Fresh talent who thinks they can take the series in a new and better direction. Because it's obvious that Butch thinks so highly of himself that he's just going to end up copying the cartoon for beat him. Uh, yeah, bro. They should, uh, they should, uh, let you be the new showrunner for this reboot. Thank you for agreeing with me, Simply Dad. Yeah, uh, I don't really know what that means, Mark. Why, why did you write that in the So script? anyways, even beyond not getting some fresh talent to work on it... <laughs> to me, this is the most obvious reason why the show won't work, but the Fairly Odd Parents completely relies on being in the medium of animation. I would have to assume that Cosmo and Wanda are gonna be CGI characters with a live-action Timmy. Which, first of all, is going to make their relationship incredibly stilted and awkward. Unless they can somehow find a kid who can convincingly act like he's not just talking to a blank wall. But even then, the original show had a lot of really extreme cartoony wishes. What's going to happen when Timmy gets the super bike? Are, are they going to try to green screen on a guy's torso to a regular bike? Or, or try to make some CGI abomination? Because either way, it's going to look creepy. Not to mention having to model all this stuff is going to get quite expensive. I mean, Butch Hartman literally admitted that in their own movie they ran out of CGI budget and had to make Cosmo want a live action for a period. Well, even beyond that, though, I think there's a much more glaring issue that's going to creep its head around the corner sooner or later with the series. And it's that the plot of the Fairly Odd Parents is so damn depressing, and seeing it in live action will make people miserable. What's the Fairly Odd Parents about? A boy getting into trouble over wishes he gets granted by his fairy godparents. But when you take a closer look at it, it's really about a boy who is so badly treated by his parents and the people around him that he needs literal godparents to make him not so miserable. I don't want to see a real-life little boy get neglected by his parents or tortured by his caretaker, that's going to be awful. No matter how comedic of a tone they try to take with it, it's always going to have an underlying theme that's hard to avoid. I mean, hey, if you want any more proof of that... <laughs> the most obvious thing to point out here is that they've already tried to make the Fairly Odd Parents in live action three times, and not a single one of them was successful. But hey, at least these movies realized that Timmy being a miserable 10-year-old boy would be depressing, so they just ended up making him adult stuck with the mindset of a little boy. And I really would not mind this if they were going to take a somewhat more serious approach with it, you know, actually acknowledging these mature themes instead of ignoring them like the original series did. But I know Butch isn't going to have any intentions of doing that because he's just so complacent at being a dumb comedy. The Fairly Odd movies gave us a good indication of how Butch may end up treating this retelling, and the biggest issue with those movies were how it were a live-action movie written like a cartoon with silly visuals, overacting, and cartoony sound effects for every single movement. I swear to god, I better not see Guy Moon in the credits for this new series. And I've talked about it before on the channel, so I won't focus on it much. But the stories of these live-action movies show such a disregard for what the series was setting up that I don't even think they realized what made Channel Chaser so special. Channel Chasers is all about Timmy getting so distraught and selfish over the concept of losing Cosmo and Wanda that he wishes to live inside the TV for the rest of his life, where he can never grow up. But by the end of the special, he learns to accept that and acknowledges someday he's going to need to let go of the past. And we see later on in the future that's exactly what happened, and he became a better person for that. I'm gonna grow up someday, and I just want to make sure I remember the things that really meant something to me. But in the movies, they bring up this... Timmy Turner rule, where it's stated that if there's a boy called Timmy Turner, he's allowed to keep his fairies forever. And, and yeah, as a kid, this may have made me happy that he was going to be with Cosmo and Wanda forever, but the only reason it made me happy was because Channel Chasers invoked that emotion of dread and sadness in the first place. And looking back, it's like, you know, that's something. I'd, I'd kill for a bittersweet ending now. And that's not even to mention how by the third one, they straight up kill off Timmy by the end and turn him into a furry for it. Look, I don't even want to get into that. But all this brings up the question, though. Most of what I'm saying here is that I'm worried because of what I think they will do. Not that the series just outright couldn't work. So how would I retell the Fairly Odd Parents in live action? Could it be done? Well, I don't know. I think it could be decent, at least. Okay, so here's the secrets for success, Butch. This is what you gotta do to make this new series amazing. 1. Limit the amount of episodes. Don't go into this Butch expecting another 10 season run. Honestly, you'd be lucky to get 2 seasons at this point. So carefully choose what parts of the original stories you want to adapt. For me personally, if I were to have to adapt the show into, let's say, a 26 episode season, I would make sure I get the pilot of Timmy getting his fairies, then have a couple episodic adventures to establish the status quo, then start taking on the more bigger specials like Schools Out the Musical and build up all the way to the finale, which is Channel Chasers. I'll talk about this more in a bit, but my point is, limit the episode number and plan ahead. 2. 
lean more into serialization. The Fairly Odd Parents was, to my knowledge, one of the first animated kids' comedies to have somewhat serialized stories. You know, throughout the series, there are certain status quo changes that they stick to, such as Mark Chang starting out as Timmy's enemy, to briefly living in his town and going to his school as a kid, to eventually just straight up disappearing. Stuff like that makes rewatching the show really cool as a kid, seeing them call back to previous events or the small little nods to other episodes. Cartoons have been getting a lot more into serialization more recently, so I'd love to see a fully realized take on this with the Fairly Odd Parents. 3. Don't be afraid to get more serious. No, I don't want Timmy getting all depressed about his life or crying all the time about how his parents are neglecting him. But a lot of the more serious moments of the show were kind of brought down by the dialogue. Like at the end of Apple Catastrophe when Timmy literally just quotes the Bible. Because the truth will set you free! What I mean by this is I think they should lean more into Cosmo and Wanda being Timmy's guardians and trying to make him a better person. So when he eventually loses them, he'll take a lot of the lessons he learned later in life, and therefore becomes a better person. Stuff like him wishing to be rich and cool, or realizing that just because he can wish for something doesn't mean he has to, are some of my favorite moments of the show, and I wish they went into that stuff more. Have Timmy not just be a selfish kid again by the next episode, allow him to adapt and change and grow as a person. And finally, and, and this is more of a broader point, but focus a bit more on furries and what it means to have a godparent. At first, furries are presented as this mystical and amazing thing, but throughout the series we learn just how awful it is being one and how corrupt furry world is. There's literally an episode where they get overthrown by pixies through a hostile takeover. I wish the series focused more on furry culture, and how the rules were kinda stupid and unfair at times. Would've been cool to see Timmy take on Furry World, you know? It took me until re-watching Child Chasers to realize this, but Timmy didn't even know for the first three seasons of the show that he was gonna end up losing Cosmo and Wanda when he was older. It was a big deal since I thought it was already a given, but seeing Timmy actually have to come to terms with that was heartbreaking knowing someday he'd have to give up his best friends and would forget about them even existing. But after Channel Chasers, it's rarely ever brought up again. I know you're gonna say that's because it was supposed to be the finale, but it wasn't, so that's invalid. That's why I really think having the series build up to the adventure Channel Chasers would be amazing. You know, give it a proper send-off. Have each special focus on a different aspect of having furries until Timmy's finally given the bombshell that needs to let them go. Specials like Abracatastrophe were so hyped to a kid. You get to see Timmy having his only real asset, you know, Cosmo and Wanda, stripped from him and given to his greatest enemy. And he needs to get them back on his own, it's crazy. Then you could even throw some of the smaller ones like Schools Like the Musical or Furry Idol for some levity, before building up to Channel Chasers. But then again, I'm thinking about this from an animation perspective. Could an episode like Channel Chasers or Abra Catastrophe even work in live action? With how much CG and special effects they would require. But if they could do that, then the series would have a definite conclusion where we finally get to see him grow past his selfish ways and accept the fact that he's gonna need to let go of Cosmo and Wanda. No later episodes to undo that, or crappy live-action movies to stay to keeps them forever. It would wrap a neat little bow in the series. But I mean, they're not gonna do that. Calling it now, it's just gonna be a season's worth of random nothing episodes adapted from the series Golden Age, with worse acting, worse writing, worse... Uh... Everything? Yes, everything, thank you, pretty much. This is revenge, you guys. Everyone was clowning on him on Twitter the other day to the point where he was trending. We kicked the hornet's nest. He created our childhoods, and now his revenge, he's actively gonna destroy it. If there's one thing we've learned today, it's not only do I care way too much about this random 2000s Nick cartoon that was only good for five seasons, but it's that a Fairly Odd Parents reboot isn't necessarily a bad thing. And hopefully with the stuff I pointed out to you, you can see just what they could hopefully do to make this thing great. You know, if they would simply just hire me. Ser seriously, Nick, my schedule is open. I'm up for anything. I'll even play Timmy Turner if you want me to. But hey, uh, at the end of the day, all this is is just wishful thinking. Y'all see this, man? I swear to God I don't get paid enough to deal with this shit. <laughs>